It never fails to amaze me at a, a gathering like this that everybody who has a story or a song or a poem to share uh, chooses it from the depths of his own being. And yet, by the end of the morning, the end of the uh, session, there are all these wonderful connections that just happen. Uh, someone will do a poem about mom, and someone will do another poem about mom, and, and, and it's as if it's as if the pair of poems had been uh, written by one poet. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. I remember um, some time ago doing a uh, storytelling feature that followed the open mic uh, at a place called Story Space. And when I got up to give my, my uh, story, it connected to every single story in the open mic that had preceded it. It was just an amazing experience. The reason I mention this, besides the fact that it's interesting in, in and of itself, is that Mark told a poem earlier about uh, the moment that poetry finds you. And um, the poem I want to read to you has the, the same kind of theme. It's a poem by Pablo Neruda, who I'm sure many of you know, and it's called simply Poetry. And it, it was at that age poetry arrived in search of me. I don't know. I don't know where it came from, from winter or a river. I don't know how or when. No, they were not voices. They were not words nor silence. But from a street I was summoned, from the branches of night, abruptly from the others, among violent fires or returning alone. And there I was without a face, and it touched me. I did not know what to say. My mouth had no way with names. My eyes were blind, and something started in my soul, fever or forgotten wings. And I made my own way, deciphering that fire. And I wrote the first faint line, faint without substance, pure nonsense, pure wisdom of someone who knows nothing. And suddenly I saw the heavens unfastened, and open planets, palpitating plantations, shadow perforated, riddled with arrows, fire and flowers, the winding night, the universe, and I, infinitesimal being, drunk with the great starry void, lightness, image of mystery, felt myself a pure part of the abyss. I wheeled with the stars, my heart, broke loose on the wind. Thank you. My father is poised over a heap of brush. He chooses his next victim, lifts his foot, and with a brief grimace and crack, snaps the, the long branch in two. My father in work pants, John Deere cap, long sleeve shirt, white cotton t-shirt line showing through, shows me how to pick up a snake, not run in fear, buries my dog when it dies of old age, helps me plant my first seeds, rake my first rose, harvest my first tomatoes. He shows me how to pick a green bean in the hot sun, run it under the hose, and eat it still standing there in the rows, tasting the sweet, crunchy life in a pod. Now the crack of these sticks as I stand on each one and smell the pine, sap sticking to my fingers, brings me to my father's side again. Now, I am going to disrupt the beautiful picture by reading a poem I wrote after his death. Um, my mother and father had a 50-year contentious relationship, and this was part of the fallout of that. This poem is called, If a Tree Falls. If a tree falls, what do you hear? What if they are a stand of cherry trees cut from the back lawn of your childhood home? Trees that your father planted near his peach and apricot trees, strawberries and raspberry bushes, roses, tomatoes, Swiss chard. What if the trees were felled by your mother who hasn't had a good view of the lake in 15 years of a 50-year marriage and who is widowed now for 75 days and tried to cut them down herself with a hacksaw standing in the snow knee high? What if she asked her children to help, but they wouldn't, couldn't, for the wound was too fresh and sudden, so she hired professionals to cut them down before the blossoms of spring appear, cut them down in their sleep.
18 years ago, I was a first year teacher. And anyone who's ever, I guess, been, don't have to be a teacher, to know that in the first year of your job, it can be very stressful. And one of the bright spots of that year for me was another first year teacher who became my very good friend. And 18 years ago this month, on a Friday afternoon, she was standing at the copier making copies, as teachers often do, and I gave her a hug and said, have a great birthday, because her birthday was going to be Sunday. The next day, on Saturday, I got a phone call, and I was very confused, because we have phone trees, or at least they used to have phone trees for teachers. So if there were ever a snow day, a certain teacher would call, and then you'd, the phone tree would continue. So my phone tree person called me, and I thought, it's April. Why is she calling me? She was calling me to tell me that my friend had died. My friend, whom I had hugged at the copier machine the day before and wished a happy 27th birthday to. It took me many years, five, six years, to be able to write about this. And I wrote this poem for my friend. Her name was Nancy, 10 years ago. So every April, I think of Nancy who died the day before her 27th birthday. It's called The Scent of Lilies. For Nancy O, 1967 to 1994. I remember you in the scent of lilies. Not those nun-like sister blooms of Easter, subtle in their prim, blanched habits, funereal, forgettable, but rather in these gaudy petaled orientals, shot through with shocking pink, theatrical and expansive, heads back, smiles wide, a show tune or a French sonnet on their lips, their breath a proud, sinuous perfume. In the scent of lilies, I remember you. Thank you. The poet pulled his boat to the edge of the water, but the river was too high and he could go no farther. He saw a butterfly cross easily to all the places he had hoped to see. And his tears overflowed when he saw this happen. He fell into his soul, woke up laughing. Now he understood. He was awakened for good. Life talks to us with action. It's hard to listen, but the heart keeps insisting. Let the truth be heard. Feel the fire of life's own desire. It's far behind the words. Leave your boat on the shore. It won't carry you anymore. The poet went to town, and a crowd gathered around. We spoke of God as love and not anger in the clouds. And the heaven we hoped to win were already in. But they were too far away to hear him. They were looking for a savior to break the Roman sword, a Spartacus to fight against a pagan emperor. But he told them, Love will give you more than what you hunger for. But they could not go through the door. They did not believe a lamb could roar. It's hard to listen, but the heart keeps insisting. Let the truth be heard. Feel the fire of life's own desire, far behind the words. Leave your boat on the shore. It won't carry you anymore. A child holds a flower and fragrance swirls. Blinded by innocence, he clearly sees the world. But then foolishly, we tell him what to believe when his heart has all the answers. Hear the silence. Life has designed it to let the truth be heard. And deep in this quiet, you will find it once you lose the words. 
they won't carry you anymore. Now the poet lived his life like a song of poetry, written in a language only the heart can speak. But a story of love can be sung by you and me. Reach out and grab your melody and sing your life like a song of your own poetry. Thank you. My mom loved pansies, pussy willows, and violets, and many tiny vases with bouquets gathered by her children adorned her kitchen window. She loved playing bridge, eating M&Ms, and drinking coffee, spending many afternoons and evenings with the ladies, gossiping between hands of cards. She read mysteries and did crossword puzzles, went to the library once a week, as well as church. She loved her Johnny, my dad, with all her heart and soul, and she loved each of her eight kids through all our trials and tribulations. She also loved cigarettes, vodka, and chocolate. <laughs> Christmas was not complete without a five pound box of chocolates by her bedside, a carton of cigarettes peeking out of her stocking, and enough liquor from the construction company contacts to keep her and my dad afloat for the winter. Her early years were part of the Great Depression, her mothering years, suburban bliss, and her later years were spent with more and more isolation. Hooked up to an oxygen tank looking like R2-D2 and heaving away 24-7, she wrapped herself up in a cocoon of quiet, independent meditation. Brittle bones and shrinking frame, doing less, seeing less, yet holding on tenaciously through a brutal, snowy winter. And like the caterpillar, finally accepting its fate, living forever in the darkness or letting go, she did, she let go, emerging as the colorful butterfly she truly was. The weather outside changed, the sun shined bright and warm, and yellow daffodils and forsythia burst upon the bleak landscape, finally pushing winter behind it. Her wake was a noisy party of shared memories, her funeral mass overlooked by a shining stained glass window of the sea, complete with spirals whirling in both directions. Eulogized and remembered by many, family and friends gathered to share in her quiet graciousness, knowing heaven now included her flying free as a butterfly in my dad's colorful spring garden. Lake in April. Everything longs for permanence here. First comes that moment of balance before sun begins to work longer hours. Believe me, change comes faster in April. Well, back in December, the ice took forever to freeze. This time, even making a quick shimmer of curtsy as it departs is impossible. All through this mad rush of promise, I forget how things were long before our house stood with its water view. A glacier quietly melted once here. Crows are still calling up the sunrise. Acorns loll all about the pond. Each summer, it is wind's intention to move any leaves left undisturbed by dragonflies wings in summer. That's, thank you. I have a few uh, thoughts to share today. Uh, the first is called uh, Musings on Chapter and Verse. No rhymes, no meter, no musicality, no peas, no person's personality, no thing's the thing, no alliterated attachment to antiquity, no line of liturgy. No matter, at core, it must be metaphor. Because I'm looking for my muse, magic mirror, magnus opum, 
I'm led by the lure of reflection into a hall of mirrors, reflecting forever the dreams that find me looking into them. There I am. Then I had much more hair. I was full of intent. I felt unstoppable. Now there's much more scalp. Intention flickers in and out. And I can't stop or I'll remain still for eons, trying to remember where is my muse? I remember hearing it in my headphones on the airwaves in Oregon. Laying down a groove, it's a platform for dialogue, for discourse on this business of being, on this game of existence. The telephones are lighting up. My listeners are with me. Where is my muse? I remember seeing it on the sidewalks of San Francisco as I emerged from the performance, still in a state of fusion with my bandmates, as well as members of the audience. So the littered concrete became a vehicle for the spectrum of the human condition that it carried, who were all participants in an infinite choreography. Where is my muse? I can feel it. I can feel it rising up from the ground as I lay on my back, peering into the galaxy in a cloudless high Sierra night. Oh muse, it is to you whom I speak. My hair can all fall out. My vision can become a blur. Your connection is all I need. Thank you for letting me find you. Oh, East, the breath of our delight, air and spirit are your sight. Bring us to your inner might, rose soft petals in spring's flight. Oh, air, that present here at breath bears us in its moving rest. Where hawks delight on thee to fly, seeing clearly from the sky, calling softly as they cry to us, earthbound in our nests, resting on our mother's breast. Clayborne, sightless, wingless forms, here to suck in earth deep's charms. O oh, wind, keep us in your ear, whisper of your journey here that we may ride with you. O oh, south of passion's heated fire, rise up, rise up and inspire. Burn our dross and fears away, inflamed upon a bright new day. Beat heart and soul into our passion. Forge our minds in new impressions. White, hot, leaping, roaring tide of fearless, flaming, burning stride. Illumine all our souls inside. Oh, beat the drums of passion time. Oh, West, to you we look, we rush, we glide like memories on the morning tide. Oh, clear, bright morn of even song, oh, restless calling of the sea, wide stretched unto eternity. True rollings thunder on our sand. Let us transfixed grab hold your hand to sail upon your teeming shores. Abundancy within you roars. Let us respond with open hearts to greet your cool washed shores of love. O oh, mother, north to, we, to thee we come, keeper of the lover's womb, Barren of our cares and faults, O mother, Northland of our birth, to thee we turn. The air, wind, fire-swept sea does toss its heart at you and is not lost. Upon your comfort, cold-kept shores, beyond all cares, roiled and trodden in the years, O heal, 
O heal, O blessed earth. O heal, O heal in new rebirth. O mother, blessed mother, earth. Salute. Salute to the earth. Salute to my sister brother. Salute to the upward sky being sun. Salute to spring begun. What wondrous love is this? How my soul, oh my soul, what wondrous love is this? How oh my soul, what wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul, to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am, while millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing, while millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing his love for me. And through eternity, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity, I'll sing on. Thank you. Fireflies take the air a swarm of waiting dark and light, pausing before going on, the warm, sweet balm of forever dusk coursing through our limbs, lean and bare. But for a jar of what we hope will be ours, we are unarmed. This is us, be back after dark, a far distant song. We run, we run through the field as erratic in our flight as the tiny points of elusive life we chase. We race through the buzzing, thrill of throbbing night like ponies pounding the earth, like geese leaping toward the sky, like the golden waves from the suns of twilight. We are free, alive. The glee of freedom explodes as we scatter, 
There are no bathtubs where we rush. The crickets, the skunk grass, the creek, the ground, the breeze. This is us, chasing, capturing, hooping, and wheeling until the street lights go on. And we are each called in, one by one, to go to bed, to slumber, and slumber yet. I'm Dr. Tom Sullivan. And I'm Dr. Hugh Taylor. From the latest in medical testing to ordering prescriptions, health information technology is changing the way physicians practice medicine and patients receive care. Simply defined, health information technology means using computer hardware and software to securely store, retrieve, and share a patient's medical information. One of the biggest benefits of this technology is the ability to create an electronic health record, or EHR, a digital version of the patient's health information that formerly was stored on paper and in many cases still is. An electronic health record offers faster access to health information and reduces the risk of medical errors, such as potential drug interactions from multiple prescriptions. An EHR also offers the possibility of better and faster communication and secure record sharing among all your health care providers, which results in better coordination of care and often eliminates unnecessary tests and procedures. For more information on how health information technology is improving medical care for patients, visit healthit.gov.